president of World Smart Cities Forum, WSCF, a non-profit company based in London and New York. So international tayo ngayon. <laughs> so he lead the vision and strategy for the municipalities how to deal with the urban challenges. So with a 10 year, 10 plus years of experience, he established a W. SCF as a trusted partner and advisor for metropolitan cities around the world by providing them with a mechanism of sustainable growth model for their cities. So he leverages his expertise in corporate finance, GovTech, artificial intelligence, and smart city designed to empower tech startup and SMS that are able to provide the city with the right solution and service. So through XN3, a tech accelerator that he co-founded, he facilitated the collaboration and investment between the private sector and the public sector by enabling the development and implementation of smart city pilot test beds with the Twin Cities Initiative. His mission is to foster a global network of smart city stakeholders and to accelerate the transformation of urban spaces into more livable, resilient, and inclusive places. Please join me in welcoming a sustainable smart city designer, investor, and founder of the Twin Cities Initiative, Sir Jaiwan P Peter Chan. Hi, nice to meet you all. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear you, Sir Peter. Sorry, um, yes, there is kind of the huge time gaps between New York City and over there in Philippines. So, um, it's my honor to be here to share uh, my experience and also the the concept of the Twin Cities initiatives I'm working on right now. Um, so let me actually share my uh, presentation materials with you. Just hang on a second. So World Smart Cities Forum is a nonprofit organization. Um, we basically based in, in London and New York at the same time. Um, We've been working on the small city project around the world, and we are currently working on more than 20 cities in mostly metropolitan cities around the world. Uh, what we do is three uh, pillars, and basically we providing the master planning uh, strategy uh, as well as the central government as well as the municipalities the local tech sandbox, which is basically um, the innovation hub, the open tech cluster. Um, I'll, I'll explain exactly what it is about in later, uh, later pages. <clears throat> uh, finally, we also are uh, raising funds to how to uh, dealing with the small city projects based on the PPP model. So for the, the investment and from private sectors, they actually invest in the companies in the tech sandbox at the same time the some of the infrastructure fund impact fund and also some of the grants and internationally they also interest in working together uh based on the this kind of financial resources in the projects and our concept of smart city is very simple but it's very very crucial and important uh because human centricity is a kind of concept i know because um I've been actually working with the Korean government before and also the, the Chinese government as a consultant uh, many years ago. The sum of the concept uh, of the small city is basically focusing on the <clears throat> materials uh, and also the infrastructure itself. Uh, but the thing is, um, if you build small cities today, the city is naturally getting older. Uh, from tomorrow, you need to think about how to maintain the city. Who's going to be responsible for the uh, maintenance fee, right? So you need to think about how you can build a small city much more sustainable, economically, environmentally. So um, we more focus on the <clears throat> the activities by the stakeholders of the city, mostly the residents or the people who frequently visit the city. Uh, there are like a four different you know supporting pillars as well. We needed some kind of um, data-driven economy in the city. And of course, technologies innovation is the key to support the city much more sustainable. And environment-friendly ecosystem, of course, we are talking about, you know, based on the COP28, we're talking about net zero and making this, the earth much more. And, uh, Okay, so also the culture context. 
as well. And vision of core value um, is a sim I mean, it's kind of simple as well. Go innovation, grow city that meets nature, people, and technology, and accelerate future life and for the people. This is kind of the examples that we actually engaged ourselves into the small city projects. Uh, back in 2015, 2015, 2017, for three, four years, we built AI intelligent cities in Canary Wolf Financial District in London. Uh, basically, we only open for the, the startups and tech companies in academia so that they can basically bring their resources and uh, disruptive technology uh, based solutions and products embedded in the city of the streets and buildings. So uh, it was very successful because uh, 1,000 companies applied for the programs, um, 100 startups and the company tech companies invited to the accord programs for two, three years. Eventually, uh, we have 36 winners and MVPs out of the court. And um, most important thing is we have more than 10 unicorns out of these initiatives. So some of the big names like Explorer, uh, TransferWise, and Revolut, and they are actually the graduates of these programs in level 39. Uh, later on, I got invited. I, I was hired by the, the president of South Korea back in 2017, uh, working on the Smart City National Pilot Project in Busan. Uh, so I was a master planner to deliver the master plan to the central government. So they actually working on it right now. Basically, it was a $6 billion project in Greenfield. Um, but, you know, this is kind of the top-down initiative. So because I prefer the brownfield mixed with the greenfield, but the Korean cases was pretty, uh, pretty much about the um, the Greenfield projects and near the International Airport of Busan. So they are working on right now uh, like this. So it will be completed within three, four years. Um, also back in 2021, one year before the yeah. Ukrainian war, uh, we had a kind of um, the small city national project in Ukraine between small cities forum and uh, Zelensky cabinet and new president of Ukraine in uh, 2021. Um, but, you know, as, as everybody knows, and war started back in uh, April 2022. So I was in Ukraine several times to discuss what to do. So now the smart city concept of Ukraine transformed into the recovery Ukraine and how the cities should be rebuilt again uh, in Ukraine. So the thing is, there's nothing to be built uh, in the territory of Ukraine during the war time. So uh, what I suggested to the leadership of Ukraine, we are going to build some other cities as a urban test beds. So we can pull the one of the successful model and those successful model will be replicated in the cities of Ukraine post the war time. So but in the meantime, we can all so think about other affordable housing projects. Um, so um, there are like a three different categories in Kiev, as an example. So they picked up this kind of <clears throat> urban test beds bringing into the Twin Cities initiatives. And we also have the, uh, the contract between us and to, uh, with the Mumbai city government and MMRDA to building up the new small city projects to avoid the uh, pollute, you know, pollutions and they building the um, the industrial park in the city of Mumbai, which is a new project, so Orange Small City. And um, on the uh, critical situations in Ukraine, in the meantime, we are actually inviting 21 cities globally where we are going to build the small city project together between the cities as a co uh, joint projects. So this vehicle will be magnetic um, to attracting the tech companies, more than 50,000 tech companies around the world, and also the um, innovation scale of funds um, based on those companies. And uh, 21 cities involved in this one, but they are going to have their own uh, extensive strategy strategic uh, roadmap. So they will have one or maybe multiple uh, designated area in the city. So each one of the designated cities, uh, the area of the city as an urban test beds, 
uh, between 100,000 to 500,000 population. Uh, some of the cities, they have a um, very small um, uh, population, less than maybe 500,000. They can try out a 50,000 scale of the small city as a start. Uh, then they can actually grow up and they can extend the model to the other adjacent district or area. So this is like kind of each one of the court goes like a three-year uh, three concept. So uh, within uh, seven years, eight years time, most of the cities, they have at least two or maybe three different courts uh, based on the uh, their priorities. So we have right now about 35 candidates and uh, we are going to host the uh, Austin Summit next month, May 21st in New York, uh, where we are going to declare the Twin Cities Initiatives as an, under the name of the New York Accord. So we are going to declare which city will be a partner, uh, partnering companies and participating cities uh, in these initiatives. In the meantime, we are going to uh, launching the attack sandbox in five different locations at a time. So these are the uh, the candidate of uh, Twin Cities Tech Sandbox, where the at least more than two thousand three thousand tech companies they can work together in the city. So this kind of tech uh, sandbox will really beneficial to the city. Uh, because they can actually uh, increase the number of the, uh, the populations. Also, they can host a lot of com international companies. Uh, of course, they can actually have the very high qualified job creations based on this. And uh, initially, we are working on some of the agenda uh, will be really easily pick up. Um, so, for example, like uh, digital transformation is the key because a lot of cities, they want to change it uh, because the younger generation is much more... Uh, you know, uh, easy to control the kind of digital contents. And also we are changing some kind of environment of the digital transformation and uh, some of the kind of uh, priorities and based on the interesting point of the participating city. So we are basically bringing this kind of concept uh, to achieve the specifics based on the twins, uh, uh, digital twins and also the tech samples. We can also provide some edge data center uh, based on edge computing technologies as a start uh, as a part of the you know uh, master plan and blueprints into the cities, and this can show you some of the um, the examples of the R and D can be transformed into the commercializations because you need to also increase or strengthen the the local economy something uh, you know popping up. Uh, what are the economy? So as we, I showed earlier about the London ecosystem, even one unicorn company can change the whole ecosystem in the city. So this is something that we're trying to drive into the every uh, participating cities in the Twin Cities initiatives. And we also, uh, based on open big data, which is a kind of data markets and uh, the stakeholders of the city can be involved in this uh, by providing their own data and also they can utilize the data uh, in public. And some of the companies participating in the tech sandbox, they can also analyze those data to be um, uh, economically transferred. Um, innovation and disruptive technology can be used for every details in every corner of the streets or even the, uh, the daily lives of the residents. So we can actually focusing on the waste and uh, water, mobility, security, energy, and life and culture. This is kind of the big pillar that we just define exactly what kind of subcategories can be applied and also uh, embedded in the city in the future. Uh, small digital city is one part of it. And uh, also the, uh, of course, is very important, um, clean and um, clear city. So we're trying to uh, put some kind of specific, uh, you know, the dimensions of the KPIs for the company side and also the, the uh, government end and also the uh, the schools and something. So we can try to uh, decrease the carbon and also the reduce the uh, air pollutants and water pollutions. Sometimes we can utilize the water something kind of different dimension, different purposes for the residents. Some of the things in a small city can be shown 
Um, also, you can see it uh, vividly. Uh, some of the, the platforms are based on the EV uh, sharing car mobility platforms, public transportation system like a BRT and tram systems. And sometimes we need this kind of advanced model of the logistics uh, or smart energies. Uh, you can utilize a kind of the empty spaces on the rooftop to be filled with the uh, solar panels or wind power or floating a uh, solar panel on the sea or lake or reservoir. So that can be used and to optimize the daily lives. Tech sandbox, as I mentioned again, this is very, very important and to uh, change the whole ecosystem of the city. So we are trying to nurturing the innovation ecosystems based on the startups and tech companies and investors. Um, so some of the tech sandboxes will be actually working that right this way. So we just grow the, the small companies, the stage and the series A stage to be uh, eligible to providing their solutions products to the city. And eventually our fund or affiliate fund can actually invest in them. And uh, so we will see that about 10%, 15% of the companies can be uh, MVPs. They can be constantly grow and eventually they can grow um, global unicorns. And um, I'm going to skip this part. Just the key things at the Oxygen Summit next uh, next month in May in New York City about the safety of living, digital small cities and smart mobility, smart water, energy and efficiencies, and smart education. Those are the kind of common um, uh, themes and for dis uh, discussing topics for every participating cities. And in the meantime, we also the uh, giving examples about the impact index for the city governments what kind of KPIs they can actually working together uh, with other cities under the uh, this Twin Cities. Uh, it's kind of PP private sector, 30% from public, not only from the, um, the, you know, responsibilities from the local municipalities, because most of the cities around the world they're not financially independent anymore after a uh, pandemic. So I think that they need a lot of support, even from the central government based on the budget or more budgets and you know strategic budget from the central government end. And at the same time, we also collaborating with the uh, public uh, international grant, EDCF fund, for example, or ADB or the World Bank group or something like that. So. We are actually open discussions with those organizations, how we can actually bring more financial resources to the systems. So as I said again, uh, these are all the old candidates. So we already have about 20 cities confirmed to show up at the Oxygen Summit to discuss the how to collaborate on the Twin Cities initiatives by signing on the New York Accord uh, next month. So I hopefully am um, looking forward to Philippines or Indonesia be a part of these initiatives because we are not UN organization. We are not the, the government. Um, basically, this is a PPP based uh, you know, international collaboration vehicles. So um, this should be like kind of a joint uh, mega single projects. So um, I think there may be 21 cities is kind of maximum number that we can bring them into the initiatives. So we already had you know, your summit last year in Liverpool, uh, England, uh, with the six metropolitan cities. And uh, we declared it <clears throat> next month in May in New York City, finally declared 21 participating cities. And uh, from that point, we are you know, launching the tech sandbox as well as raising the fund and uh, globally about uh, how we can actually input uh, this concept into the, these joint projects as well. So Oxygen Summit, Oxygen is kind of the multiple meanings of the name. Also is the name of the fund we have in New York and the UK. And uh, we're building up the kind of urban test beds in uh, participating cities. This is actually discussed and also shared uh, based on the experience of the cities and insights of the speakers. And it will be really highlighted uh, from our experience in before, uh, back in 2022, uh, we hosted a um, uh, uh, Web3 International Tech Forum uh, in London. 
Um, also the inaugural summit in Liverpool last year, and we are actually um, one month ahead from now um, to host the uh, New York events, Austin Summit to talk about the Twin Cities initiatives. So um, also there will be <clears throat> the Expo, Smart City Expo USA is a kind of lined up together with the Austin Summit. So there will be, um, you know, about 5,000 uh, individuals, more than 100 speakers and 300 governments and officials, they all show up in New York City. So we basically co-hosting this event together with New York City government and my, the World Smart Cities Forum. This is the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, I welcome any questions from them. Thank you.